Hey everybody, it's Brandon from AGL, and uh, we're back with our third video with about the uh, Twin Dream aircraft, and we wanted to show you what we're doing as far as electronics are concerned, and uh, how we've installed them. We do understand that everybody's going to use uh, a different flight controller. We're using a vector, the Eagle Tree Vector flight controller. You may use an APM or a PixHawk or uh, uh, even my Fly Dreams autopilot, um, and we're just going to give you some basic measurements uh, in relation to where we put our flight controller it might help you out with choosing your uh, servo extensions and things like that okay guys what we're going to do real quickly is uh, outwardly from the last video you'll notice that we have a hole cut right up here in the front we're actually going to be using a servo city I believe it's an SPT 200 mount it's fairly beefy it's very heavy but it's got this great great connection where it allows for very smooth servo travel uh, it's a lot better than most of the other uh, pan and tilts that we've used so we're going to try it out on this guy. It's a little heavy, but this airplane is going to have enough power and uh, lift to uh, take it up. We also, well Kevin fabbed up this nice little plate. It's really simple. Just going to go right here. and It's going to give the uh, servo mount a little bit more structure and substance to hold on to. So that's why there's a hole right here in the top. And we're going to look inside the, the airframe. Take off the hatch. And here's our vector. This setup is, is actually much more simple um, through the vector than other flight controllers like a PixHawk or a, uh, an APM it, if you wanted to add OSD to it. The uh, vector has it all built in. The nice thing about this is we have it set up for PPM. So with the Easy UHF, this one wire, I know it's a little dark, one wire is our control wire. It's going to give modes and it's going to give control. Uh, control responses. It's going to give us our throttle airlon elevator and, and rudder. Then we also have right here two more wires leading from the UHF receiver that travel up to the front and they terminate here. That's actually going to be for our pan and tilt and it's, it's not a PPM based signal so it's going to go directly from the receiver and our pan and tilt wires and wiring is going to be right here on the right side and that'll let us give us our pan and tilt the wiring is very simple for the vector the nice thing about it, it has one servo lead for camera and another for the VTX obviously the VTX is not installed on the airframe right now so it's loose but this is going to be our VTX wiring we have a video and a power and a ground that's going to go to, uh, right now we're going to use an immersion 600 uh, milliwatt 5.8 transmitter just for uh, flight testing. We'll probably move to 1.3 after we get this thing uh, dialed in. Next thing you can see, we modified, well it's a little difficult to see actually. We have the power module mounted right here for the vector. And it's, uh, it's taped into the side of the aircraft, so we're, we're trying to keep things in the center of the aircraft clean, or as clean as possible. But the power module is connected to the vector flight controller through this, model, or this bundle. And that's also what powers the uh, camera and the video transmitter. Then it goes forward fairly simply to where our battery connection is to these XT60s. We're going to use a, a simple parallel connector to run two batteries and uh, we're planning to fly with two 5000 milliamp four cell batteries. I'm going to try, start out with these zippies. They're 25C rating batteries. I know that sounds low for some people. Uh, it's really not a big deal when you're running two batteries in parallel. Uh, especially with the smaller motors that we're using. It's not going to be a big deal. The uh, Temporarily we're running a, uh, a extension to our dipole that's in the back of the aircraft. It's a little bit too long, so we're going to get a six-inch extension to fix that. But also, one other thing you'll see right here in the side of the aircraft, it's just a uh, Hobby King lost model beeper. This is a very very simple beeper. It goes in between. We've got it between the rudder channel and the vector. And all it's going to do is when you fire up the aircraft for the first time, it beeps uh, for maybe two seconds. If you don't uh, move the control surfaces for one minute, 
it begins a steady tone and after two minutes it uh, starts a warbling uh, two-tone sound that's pretty annoying. It's going to help you find your aircraft if it goes down in the woods or in a tall grass and you can't find it. We have a BEC mounted up here just to get it out of the way. It's a 5 amp Turnigy BEC. And the, uh, the dipole we have mounted through the tail we just have the, the top and bottom elements coming out of the bottom and the top and it's a Ivy Crazy semi-rigid dipole. One thing we are going to add, we're going to leave this loose obviously for when it lands it won't break. Um, we're Just a little piece of heat shrink right here on the bottom. And that's going to keep it flexible for landing but it's going to keep it fairly rigid for uh, when you're flying so the wind won't blow it. And in this one we're going it, to, it's a little bit too thick for most of your normal uh, shrouds that go over your antennas so we're going to probably use something like a, um, a coffee stirrer because it's a little bit thicker but we didn't have one at the house so we're going to fix that up we've got uh, the Corona 939 servos in the tail for the elevator and the rudder and in the wings we have the same but they're, uh, they're not mounted right now for the purposes of the video okay now the, the motors the motors are a Turnigy 2836 uh, I believe it's a 1,040 kV motor. Now it's 28 can size, not stator size. So a lot of people have talked about uh, how big of a motor can you put on this airplane. It's actually has pre-drilled holes for a 35 size can. These are 28, so we just we've got the space if we want to in the future to use a different motor. We can easily do that. It's not a problem. And we're using a 45 amp ESC which is a little bit more than it needs but we'd rather have slightly bigger than than too small especially since we're going to be running this airplane probably less than 50 percent throttle most of its flight time all right real quick we want to show you the underside of the airframe we uh, don't have this mount or permanently mounted just yet so we can show you what's going on uh, we increase the size of this channel just a little bit because it's fine for what we have right now but we're also going to add one more wire to this and that's going to be for a strobe that comes out down the channel and follows the Aerolon servo lead out. So basically one, we just increase the size of the channel and unfortunately ours are still in shipping so we haven't run them yet. But you can see there's plenty of space for moderately sized ESCs and all you have to do is mount it it's very simple mounting. Tuck your wires in. I'd recommend putting a piece of tape over them or laminate if you want to use laminate. It's a complex shape if you, when you put the nacelle on, so putting laminate on that might be a little difficult. But a piece of masking tape right there should be just fine. The other thing we wanted to mention, we've got our CG point marked at three inches. Um, another gentleman on FPV Labs had uh, mentioned that he put his to three inches and it flew pretty well. So we're going to try that. We, we got very lucky uh, and put 10 amps of battery in it uh, and it happened to be a perfect CG location. So The other, only other thing we want to show you real quick is we just flush mounted that, that lost model beeper so that the speaker's on the outside of the airframe because if it's on the inside the styrofoam is obviously going to muffle it quite a bit and that's the bottom of the airplane. We're going to put a little bit of laminate right here to protect the paint and otherwise besides running that last wire and putting some tape over it uh, that's done alright a couple other things we wanted to touch upon were um, we dry fitted the servo and this little plate just so you guys can see what it will look like on the airframe and you can also see that we added instead of using the central spot for a magnet we just added two small magnets on each side and then two magnets on the lid and you'll see that we've got really positive locking action so that's not a problem at all now you can see we have the servo extensions right here and they're plugged in and these can be tucked out of the way there's still about three inches of space up under the nose that you can run extra wiring if you need to the battery tray we're going to add some Velcro right here so that our batteries will hold a little bit better. 
and there's also this channel right here in that channel you can run a velcro battery strap if you'd like just run it underneath the wood and have it come out the other side and that'll give you a good locking action for your batteries uh, if you want to roll the aircraft we know this is not an, you know meant to be a highly acrobatic aircraft but from uh, my fly dreams videos we've seen that it can dive loop and roll no problem um, and the one other thing uh, that we haven't done yet because we're still waiting on a part is we're gonna add the Eagle Tree airspeed expander with pedo uh, as soon as we get the 3d printed part in the 3d printed part is gonna hold the pedo tube off to the left side of the aircraft away from the propellers and away from the uh, the nose so it gets a good clean airstream and uh, gives us good accurate reading and that wraps up what we've done with this airplane. This is uh, AGL's build of the Twin Dream aircraft. And uh, we need your help with a few things. Uh, we want to know if you have any questions or comments. Please put them at the bottom of the video. Um, also, we're kind of new at putting uh, these build videos on YouTube. So if you have any comments about the build videos, um, please throw them up there. And it will help us out in the future. As always, please like, share, and, and comment on, on our uh videos, go to our, our Facebook page, uh, AGL Aerial Video Solutions, and uh, our website's www.aglaerial.com. And thanks a lot, we hope to see you soon. But wait, there's more. Forgot to mention, this is just all the uh, items that we've used on the build, and we're going to put them at the bottom of the video with links so you guys know what we're talking about and so you can find them real quick. Sorry, I forgot that a moment ago. But, uh, as before, like, share, and comment on our stuff, and uh, we'll keep them coming. If you have any other build videos you want, or any ideas, um, just let us know, and we'll, we'll try to accommodate you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so I guess you're recording, huh? Whenever you're ready. They're gonna stay. Maybe. It's a neat angle. Cool. Ready to go. Hey guys, it's Brandon from AGL and we're back with another installment of Honey I Blew Up the Airplane. No comedy, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit.